enough of that. Yeah, then he took up smoking so I could give it up. Give it up everything, in fact. Reformed man. Yep. No more rum bum concertina for Frederick. Ah. The London Fresh Air children arrive tomorrow. It comforts these children to see the civilised classes, which in this unusual case includes you, comporting themselves gracefully. Freddie, what have you done to your head? Oh, uh, this is my reformed hair. It symbolises my repudiation of vice. What vice, I hear you cry? Well, sins of the track and bookie, mainly, but uh, you name it, I'll repudiate it. Enough. Now hear this. The reputation of the family is at stake. We must excel. And Clarence, if you say to me, do I have to wear a top hat, I shall stab you through the heart and have your mutilated corpse dragged around Blandings by a donkey. Naked. Me or the donkey? Oh, no, the donkey shall be clothed to amplify your total degradation. Better than wearing a top hat. Now, how can I help? Uh, this is the new me, you see. Ever ready to help an old lady get a horse's hoof out of a Boy Scout sort of thing. Oh, Freddie, you're an imbecile. <laughs> Artsy on cracking form. London fresh air, children. Ah. So what's the solution to this repulsive sogginess? Gravo! Proper stuff you can nay heathen stir the size of peas. Bra great clinkers. Then your dainty feet will hit traction. Oh, oh, we are this filthy moss. I shall speak to his lordship. He'll never like it. He's a great one for the squelchy filth. Gravel it shall be, McAllister. I want a water the idol of a rotted joy and trimmer bloated flavours. Hey, bitch, um... Me hat, you know, the Berger affair, uh, a bit of ribbon round it. I, I seem to have lost track of it. Is it the one your lordship is presently wearing? Oh, Ooh. good heavens. Oh, bless my soul. <laughs> Thank you, Peach. <laughs> ah, Connie, had a pleasant turn around the ground. As you raise the subject of McAllister, he wishes to spread gravel across that hideous infestation of moths in the lime tree walk. No, 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 no. I am aware that McAllister seeks to desecrate my lovely moss, and I shall not countenance it. <laughs> oh, they're rather splendid. Uh, my lord, is that entirely wise? Oh. Gardener, McAllister, my lord. Oh. Thank you, Mitch. Ah, McAllister, I expect you're wondering why I've The sent... posteriors of the goddess have been ravaged by your pug! My pug. My dear fellow, I don't possess a pug. And with a morn decking on the horizon, it is a savage disgrace. Did he pick the delphiniums? Moss. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, McAllister. Unhand my moss. Why 
is McAllister getting into a taxi? Eh? Hey, is he? I've no idea. He must be uh, on the, um, uh... He's given in his notice. What? Why? What have you done? Well, that's impossible. His presence is essential tomorrow. You haven't the faintest idea what I'm talking about. It's the Blanding's fate, the most important day of our year. Oh, good Lord. Oh, 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 can't you have a word? No, I can't. You and I both know you are a, a withered homunculus rather than a conventional specimen of adult manhood. But you are the titular master of Blanding's. You must reclaim your gardener. Halt! Now look here, McAllister. We need to get one thing absolutely clear. I'll double your salary. Mm. Well, when I say double, I quite possibly mean treble. <laughs> oh, my dear fellow, please don't go. Think of tomorrow. Oh, I beg of you, McAllister. What else do I have to offer you? Ah, uh, the gravel path. Yes, of course, McAllister. Of course, with my blessing. <laughs> You'll no pack another floor without my say-so. Mm. And there'll be no mere nibbling on the dirty dumplings of the deity. Whatever that is, no, never, no. <laughs> the uh, incident is closed, McAllister. Out you hop. Come, come. Such a pretty thing under all the DIRT. Mm. Can it, you lot? Reverend Glandall here is trying to speak. Uh, thank you, Miss uh, Young Husband. Now, I merely wish to say. <laughs> uh, welcome to Market Blandings. Um, I have here the roster of your accommodation. What do you want, Frederick? His money? Oh, dear old Prue, not in the least. I am a man transfigured. My only desire is to be of service to my peers. Now, you being the peer available. I have no sympathetic ear for your desires, my boy. Tomorrow, I have to endure the torment of a stick-up collar and a top hat. A oh, grinding rectal ache. Yeah, and, of course, you have to make a speech. Oh, you, you'd forgotten about the speech. Uh, well, I tell you what, how about I get you out of that? Huh? Seriously, all I want now is to give sucker to the suffering. And if ever there was a suffering sucker, Governor, you're it. Oh, this moss must be raked up for the gravel. Now, he commanded its delivery. Well, rake up the moss? He's rather jolly. Governor, you love this. Raked up at Salby! Where can a great god feed and rick? A muckle pile of gravel shall come raining down on the path. Oh, there was scorch, man. There shall be a godly crunch. The, the thing to remember is, many of these London children are very like ordinary kids, except that some of them are armed. Oh, I say. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm here to deliver you two children. Oh, uh, well, excellent. Uh, and what would you like us to do with them? Just accommodate them. Reverend Glandall has allocated them to the castle. Right, well, Governor, I shall attend to this. Frederick, I'm a little confused. Oh, undoubtedly, but I needs must waft this lady around the family shack. Needs must walk. I do wish you wouldn't refer to the place as the family shack. Uh, Miss Younglegs and I are stepping this way to inspect the fixtures. What? Uh, regale our guests with your scintillating conversation. Ah, yeah. uh, Frederick, um, ah, uh, uh, ah, yes. <laughs> Lovely day. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. 
Pop Dine from London, what? Pop Dine? Speak English, mister. Can it, fish face? Can it what? From London, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Been out much this season? I ask, does have a door, mate. Oh, that is good news. Um, name, my dear? Gladys, sir. And this is me brother, Ern. Ern is wearing a straw rat right, that like he found in a ditch. Good heavens, sir. What a handsome article. <laughs> That doesn't look too good. Oh, no, I know. I wanted a yellow one. Well, next time I get lucky on the ponies, eh? Are you gambling men, Mr. Threepwood? Uh, uh, no, I never gamble. <laughs> Don't know what you're missing. Oh, uh, are you a gambling husband, Miss Young Lovely? No, I mean. Oh, I know what you meant. I have been known to flutter. Golly. I'd hardly be taken seriously in Beowulf and stick the odd once on horse. The odd once? Five on occasion. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I think you're going to have to marry me. Want to bet? Uh, yes. What colour is your handkerchief? Get it right and I'll marry you. Uh, uh, lemon. It's purple. Hot cheese. Uh, uh, that is one royally cool cucumber. No, no, my dear fellow, I insist. Five guineas is an acceptable fee for the restitution of the hat. Found. You appear to be issuing this small boy with a check. No, 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 no. Yes. Well, he found the hat, you see. Oh, dear little fellow. Here's sixpence. Run along now. Woof, woof. What's the child doing? Uh, he's being woof, a dog. Woof. When someone gives her money, he does his turn as a playful dog. <laughs> Most amusing. Connie, th <laughs> these young persons are staying with us. What? Perf, man! Perf. <laughs> Here, Pug has been devouring the shameful portions of the goddess. <laughs> you persist in this erroneous belief that I possess a pug. I think he means pig, sir. Pig? Pig? Ah, oh, thank you. Are you quite mad? Mad? You cry me mad when I beheld the unclean beast with my own in The filthy, trottery abomination ought to turn it into bacon! Oh. It may prove a condition of my remaining in your employment. Woof, woof, woof! Oh. Oh. He's very lifelike, ain't he? <laughs> you, boy, you are forbidden entrance to the Blanding's fate. Bleeding hell on sticks. Wow. His lordship was very insistent that you should be comfortable. Is his lordship the great Shaggy Herbert what shouted at the geezer in the knackered old coat? No. The Shaggy Herbert is the gardener. His lordship is the gentleman in the coat. And this is his knackered old hat. So the old biddy are in to Kanasha. That's Mrs. Lordship. No, that is his sister. Sister? She talks to him like she's married to him. So who are you? Are you a lord and all? I'm his lordship's butler. My name is Beach. My job is to look after Lord Emsworth, his family and his guests. And you are his guests. <clears throat> Mr Beach, I told him this was a man's job. But he won't do it because he's embarrassed. Please take this for your trouble, sir. Very kind of you, miss. But I'm afraid that if I was discovered receiving gifts from guests, I would have to be shot. <gasps> His lordship's very strict about that. What? Uh, what can I do for you, my dear? just knocked on my door. Why do they do that, do you suppose? You've come to beg me to be civil to that fantastically disgusting brace of children. Thank you, Connie. Uh, will you be doing that sort of thing, do you think? No, boil your head. 
say how very much the children are looking forward to your speech. <laughs> ah, my dear lady. <laughs> that, that lady, Mrs. Uh, Thingamy, who uh, uh, runs a grocery shop, was it? What's her name? Um, Rossiter. Cuse of face and squeaking. How would she like it if I went round to her place, dressed in this fatuous rig, went puce and squeaked? you make about for once in your life been dressed like a reasonable English gentleman and not an incontinent tramp. Have you prepared your speech? We cannot have a repeat of last year's debacle. There was no debacle. I just... A couple of names eluded me. Mine? Your own? The King's? The name of the castle? Now be quiet. Prepare your speech. Callister. Ah, earn, is it not? If I were a gambling man, Earn, I'd wager you were doing something that you did not. You have a nefarious and frankly desperate look about you. Ah, I like that in a man. I think we can do business. Extraordinary. Uh, what did you uh, pinch? Flares. I thought they'd cheer up our urn. No, oh, is urn in desperate need of cheering up of flowers? Yes, sir. I thought I'd pick him a few flowers, them long blue ones, with that great airy man shouting to come running. So I copped him on the shin with a stone. Then I go crash straight into the lady, don't I? And all the other stuff I pinched for a job to me frock. Two sandwiches, a slice of cake. So that's what was put here by the lady. Cos I belong with the pigs. <laughs> Confound the lady. Mrs Rossiter, please. Your father has deserted us. We require a speech from you. Ah, you find that amusing? Uh, no, no, I just made some intricate arrangements that are no longer necessary. Lead on, old screen. A little bit about the weather. Make way, make way. No vulgarity. <laughs> Not in your club now. We don't want a repeat of the debacle of Lady Maud's funeral. Uh, Beach! This young lady would like some tea, buns, fruit, jam sandwiches. Uh, slice of cake. Very good, Your Lordship. 
Oh, no, Brother Beach. He'd like some stuff, too. Um, would you like a little chicken? OK. Beg your pardon? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Doesn't suffer from gout, does he? Capital. Beach, a bottle of that new pour from that lot they sent down for us to try. It's nothing special, but it's, it's drinkable, as I like your brother's opinion of it. Thank you. So, here we all are. Banged up in this stinking hot tent. And, and the governor, very sensibly, in my opinion, has done a bunk. He's, he's probably cuddled up to his pig. But personally, I'd rather be closeted somewhere breezy with a pint of gin and tonic and somebody slim and authoritative with a whistle. Yeah, you would see some cuddling then, eh? Hey, eh? hey, eh, would you? Rule number one, get them laughing. You know, all this reminds me of a story I heard backstage at the Pink Pussy Club. Oh. <laughs> How's that? Don't catch <laughs> um, yes, well, there was a Frenchman and an Irishman and a rabbi. Stop me if you know it. No, no, tell a lie. Could have been a Hindu. Anyway, they're all on a train going to Rangoon. Uh, except the Spanish bloke. It turns out he doesn't have a ticket. <laughs> no, no, that comes later. Where are they going? Uh, Kowloon. Oh, you're enjoying that. No face so lovely that it cannot be improved by the application of a little jam. Hey, Beach. Oh, what do you have there? Urns comestibles, as discussed, my lord. I ventured to add some toffee and a packet of sultanas, and Cook has contributed a bag of what she calls gobstoppers. I think our guest says, cool. Is there anything else we can get you, my dear? Don't be shy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd love to get in a bunch of them flowers. I know he's a lad, but he's partial. He likes the colour. Back on, we don't have colour. I say, damn it, bitch. If this lady desires flowers for her little brother, she can jolly well have them. Will you be requiring me to do the cutting, my lord? Scissors, bitch. We are now going outside to cut flowers. We may be some time. Paddy says to him. No, no, no. I said Frenchman, I meant Chinese. Uh, and he's blind. Yeah. yeah, be definite with gags. That's also rule number one. So, um, Paddy says to him, oh, no, no, hang on, I forgot to tell you about the very tall waitress. Go back. Uh, well, uh, she's called Maureen. Or possibly Hamish. Anyway, the important thing about her is that she has to get to Brighton, which, of course, is no way Africa. And, and, and she has this arm. <laughs> My dear, I shouldn't want you to think my hand is trembling because I'm anyway apprehensive about cutting my own flowers. No, it is because I drink. And the colossal amount of alcohol I ingest every day has turned my nervous system to jelly. <laughs> Hard, you hot! Well, McAllister, when you speak Scotch, you are unintelligible. And I cannot permit you to raise your voice in my garden. So speak again, McAllister. What do you want? This young lady, whose name escapes me, but that is not material, has my full permission to take as many flowers as she wants from my garden. Note the possessive adjective, McAllister. And if you do not like it, you know what to do. <clears throat> Moreover, if you wish to remain at Blandings, you will surrender every shred of your demented ambition to disfigure my moss to a disgusting gravel path. There you have it, McAllister. What do you say? Good. And the lady's name is Gladys, as you ask. Stone the crow, still from the tents on the wobble! Hold the fire, Archie! I understand what's happened here, and I'm in control! I have you now, Constance! 
They don't come much darker than you, Mr. Three. Oh, no, God, Miss Junks, please let me explain. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Rosses, Rosses. Oh, yes. Keep doing that. You are so very lovely when you smile. Frederick! <gasps> going to my room. Ern <laughs> asked me to give you this, sir. Oh, oh. Please tell Ern that I embrace him as a gentleman and am forever in his service. Oh! <laughs> Would you care to scratch the Empress? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Corton ought to. From the vines of Charlemagne himself. Regnum mensis risque deorum. For the tables of kings and altars of gods. Cheeky little minx. Quite right. Past his best. Cobra. Um, um, I was wondering. Now that this uh, speech business has been successfully finessed, could you find it in your heart to settle my account at the Pink Pussy Club? You see, when I said yes. that I didn't need money, I was using the word need in a, in a purely private sense to mean... What? Yes. I rush your check. Good God, are you quite well? Tickety boo, my boy. Tip top. You, you do know that Aunt Constance has gone to her room? Best place for her. 